Well, hello and welcome back. So, if you're thinking about changing some receptacles and switches in your own house, I just kind of wanted to give you some things to think about if you were going to take that on yourself or you just want a little more knowledge. Obviously, it is always the smartest thing to hire a professional, someone who's a licensed electrician like myself. Um, you know, they can abide by the local ordinances and and all the codes in your localities. Um, so it's very important and it's, electricity is like one of the most dangerous things that you can ever mess with, especially if you're not trained in it. But if you're just kind of curious, want some knowledge, I'm gonna share that with you. So I'm not responsible for anything anyone does based on the knowledge I give you today. But everything I tell you is gonna be safe, it's gonna be correct for where I live, and it's what I've been doing for years and years and years. Um, I did residential electrical work, as I said in my intro video weeks ago. Um, I did that for seven and a half years, and uh, now I do other things. But So I'm still a licensed electrician, and these are just simple little tricks and tips that will help you. And if you're thinking about getting into electrical as a job, an occupation, and you want to be an apprentice, it's a four-year apprenticeship with school and final tests and all that good stuff to get your state license. And if you don't know how to go about, um, you know, what tools you'll need for the job, I can give you the basic rundown of the bare bones, what you'll need. And I mean, that can be as simple as a multi-screwdriver, you know, with multiple interchangeable tips. Um, you need a Phillips, a flathead, and a square drive, like this T1, I believe is the size, is um, ideal. This is, um, you can find these 7-in-1s or whatever you want to call them all over the place in the electrical section or otherwise. Great, you gotta have one of those. Um, well, let me just show you my rig here. So this is what I used for years and years and years. It's just a harness with a belt and this is one of the best um, tool holders I found for electrical work. Um, you will need electrical tape, which most companies will supply that for you. Uh, these are the three most important colors, green, black, and white. You will need a pair of nine inch or so um, angle pliers, cut pliers with crimpers built in the back side. We always call them Kleins. Um, you don't have to get that brand. This is a different brand, which I actually prefer, and they're cheap. You will also need a pair of strippers. These strippers are the more expensive ones, but they are some of the best ones you can get but it's all personal preference in the world of electrical and uh, you got to have some of these you can't be stripping wires with your pliers because you'll nick the wire and eventually over time it'll be an issue got to have a sharpie another important tool you will end up needing a beating screwdriver i'm telling you in residential work you will use and abuse this you need one of these and then it's just helpful to have a little fine work screwdriver with multiple tips which all mine are in the end here um, it's just a cheap one and then some sort of cutting tool you will need these I like a lot They're cheap and they do the job correctly. You can use a pocket knife whatever you want But you you've got to have those basic things um, The other most important basic thing whether you're in commercial residential or whatever Is some sort of meter to make sure things are not hot because that will save your life now you have this type of digital meter which is expensive. You have these, which are plug testers. You've got to have one of these. Um, they're cheap, you can get all different brands, and you want one with this little test button because that's how you test GFIs. GFIs are these right here. You'll see them in your kitchen, in your bathrooms, and that little test button will trip it, and it will test the functioning of that receptacle. You should really have one with that button on it. But it basically just tells you if what you've wired up is correct or not, or what the problem is. Inspectors use it to test your stuff. They also make these hot sticks. You just wave it in front of something that's you know supposed to be on or off and it'll tell you. Um, I don't recommend these. They're good in a pinch, but they will go off at static electricity and all kinds of stuff. They're just not reliable. People actually use these for, um, believe it or not, for ghost hunting. They say that you can, you know, it'll set it off when there's a static electricity charge, like a ghost or whatever nearby. Whatever, I don't recommend these. Unless you're ghost hunting, I guess. Um, these are old, these are called Wiggies. These are not battery power testers, but I'm telling you, these are some of the best you can get. You will not get false readings with these like you will some of the battery testing ones. Some of the battery ones actually will read the battery voltage and give you like a phantom reading. I haven't had that much with this, but some of them will. So just be mindful of that. 
And then you got really old battery powered units like this. Some of them have fuses and otherwise. Um, if you got the money and you can spring for it, go for this. Otherwise, all day long, if you can find you a set of Wiggies, get them, I'm telling you. But at the very least, tester, screwdriver, pliers, strippers, a knife, and some tape. Um, like I said, the company should provide you with tape. I also, on my rig, I doing residential for so long, um, carried a tape measure and a hammer with a magnet on it. I'm telling you that magnet will save your life. As much as we fool with uh, screws and staples, uh, you will drop them and you'll get frustrated. But also super important and helpful, if you can afford it, just a simple drill. Um, that will save your wrist tremendously, but otherwise you can do everything with one of these. So I set up a little demonstration here on the table. Also, this is just a little homeowner kit. One of these kits comes with everything you need to do simple home repairs like this yourself. Um, screwdriver, it even comes with electrical tape and a pair of little, just like little five inch ones, um, pliers. They don't have the crimper on it, but that's okay. So you could do everything with something simple like that. I just wanted to show that, but so basically what we've got is, oh my goodness, my camera is falling. Trying to do electrical work with a camera is a joke. But, so typically you'll have two types of switches. Well, you'll have three types of switches, but most commonly in a smaller house, you'll have a single pole switch, which is like this one where you got off is what you'll see on it. And then you'll have on. I don't know if you can see it. So when you take the switch out of the box, you'll have two points of contact. And then on the back side, like most switches, you'll have two little holes, okay? And then on this side, you'll have the ground screw. So that's a single pole. This will control one, like it'll control a light from one location. This here is a three-way. And most, most of you, I'm sure know that a three-way controls things from two locations, okay? you'll have, guess what? One, two, and three screws on a three-way. Makes sense, right? There's also a ground screw, which is painted. It's supposed to be green. But on a three-way, you'll typically have two silver or brass colored screws, and then one dark black screw, okay? So the biggest thing is we're not gonna get into travelers and, and hots and legs and all that jargon in this video because it will be here for a long time. I used to have helpers and I would train them and I like teaching and explaining all that, but I don't want to sit here and do an hour long video for you on it. So for now, just know that whatever you take off of these screws, these screws and this screw, you know, it helps a lot of people when they pull the, the switches out Take a couple pictures, everyone's got a phone now. Take a couple pictures of how it's wired up, just in case. And then as you remove wires, put them up, like for this one, if I took this wire off, say I had this wire going to that screw, all right, from out the box. When I take it off of that screw, I would pull it up so that it's hanging out the box up like this, so I know it goes to that one. Same thing with this one. If this one was hooked up to it, I would take it off and then hang it down. And that way I know that these two belong to which screw. Same thing with the other side. And just keep track. That's the biggest thing I'm try trying to tell you is just keep track of where your screws go um, if you're new to this because hooking it back up should be exactly the same unless the person before you messed it up. Um, so just remember where your screws, what, what wires went on what screws and put them back on there. And now a big important part of electrical work is so your wires you curl them okay to make a hook so this is what you should have coming out of the box and you want to make sure that that screw goes around that wire in that direction so you want to make sure that the direction that you're going to be tightening the screw down doesn't loosen this wire up so you got to make sure it's going the right direction okay and then I use the square, you can use a flathead or a Phillips as you can see here, but the square is much easier, that T1 or whatever it is. And you tighten it down until it's snug. I go snug and then I go one more. Never, ever, never, ever, I'm gonna tell you right now, if I see anyone using one of these 
on a machine screw like this, I'm going to haunt you for the rest of your days. We would have people doing that all the time and it drove me crazy. Yes, your wrist will hurt at the end of the day, but this will last longer if you protect it and use the right tool for the right job. Use one of these. So that's how you're gonna hook that up. You wanna make sure it's in there good. So you wanna do that on all your screws. Sometimes when you pull receptacles and otherwise out, you'll have wires backstabbed in these holes, as you can see. This is what they look like when they're empty, and that's what they look like with a wire that used to be in there. Don't do that if you can avoid it. Um, obviously, do what you can, but if you can't avoid it, you can't. But backstabbing's not cool. Remember that. Backstabbing's not cool. There's no reason why you should pull a, a switch out and this be bare with nothing on it like this, and you got a backstab in there. That does not make sense. Always hook it up like this if you have the option. Makes life a lot easier when you have to take it apart and put it back together and all sorts of things like that. Otherwise, you gotta strip the wire out and re -wire. I mean, it's just a nightmare. And then plus, if it's not cut all the way, and say I just pulled this out of the wall, these little things could have current on it and knock the crap out of me. Again, why it's important to check and make sure everything's off before you operate, but sometimes you don't have that luxury. Uh, when you're trying to troubleshoot. So just be mindful of your safety and other safety when you do things like that. But that's the basic gist of that. Receptacles are primarily, are primarily the same. So this is just a normal receptacle. You have two screws just like the screws that are on the switches. And then you have two screws here. These are obviously darker. They're like a brass color and these are silver. So. What makes sense in the world is your neutral or your grounded conductor goes on there. This is called a grounded conductor as well as a neutral. Goes on those. And your hot or your ungrounded conductor, which is your black typically, goes on that dark colored screw. Mine's got some paint on it, but that is a dark colored screw compared to the silver. And then, of course, your ground goes on the green screw, if you can imagine that. So, and these come, oh, no, wait, I'm sorry. I was about to show you what a switch does. So, switches grounds, when you have a switch that's got a ground, it has a little hole there. And if you don't have any pliers to bend your wires, <laughs> that's right. I also tell nursery rhymes. <laughs> if you don't have pliers to bend your wires, you stick this through this little hole here and then wrap it around there like that. And then when you tighten it down, it tightens the wire down instead of going the other way. And then when you tighten it down, it will loosen it. Same concept as these. But that just makes it easier if you don't have pliers to wrap your wires. Um, just a little trick there. Um, not many people have noticed those, I guess. Or you can just do the good old and voila and then you just tighten it down okay but so same concept with these we don't want backstabs but if you have to you have to but there is on most of these it's really hard to see you see this little slot in here you can take and this is why i said something about having one of these you can take one of these or a piece of wire or something shove it down in there and that will actually unlock when you have something backstabbed in there and you can pull it out with a pair of pliers or or needle nose or whatever you can actually pull it out it's a pain i don't like to do it i think it's i think it's easier to use a pair of these you just grab a hold of it and you just literally if you got more than this you just twist it on out but that's neither here nor there just don't backstab if you can avoid it so that's the basic gist of hooking these up you also have GFIs in your house. If you gotta replace one of these, just remember, not all these are the same. The older models, they might have these reset buttons on the sides. They might light up, they might not light up. Some of them are lit up when they're on, some of them are lit up when they're off. These models, when they're tripped, meaning they're not working, they're, they're turned off, they light up red here. Older models will be green when they're on, and when you trip them, they are not on. So, Something to look out for, but it says here on the back, these are a little more complex, I guess, but it's kind of dummy proof. Line side, which points down to these, and load side, which points to these, okay? So 
The thing to remember when you pull these out, just like the switches, remember what wires went to the line side and what wires went to the load side, because that makes all the difference in the functionality of these working right, okay? So your line side basically means anything that you want power to come in on. So I'm gonna take my hot, my black and my white from the power, go down here on the line, and then any further regular receptacles in my kitchen or bathroom that I want protected by this sensitive tripping, I will put on the load side. So my power will come in here and it will come out the load and it will go down the line to my receptacles that I need protected. So that when I plug in my tester here down the line and I trip it, it'll make this pop open and then all of the power will be shut off from here down. So it's really important that you get that right, okay? And you can have multiple things put in here on the line. This is a time when you are allowed to backstab. I will allow it. It's okay here. So basically, what you do is you'll have a stripped off end like this. You don't curl it on GFIs. And you just, if you only got one wire, I always suggest going in the bottom hole. Okay. And then you tighten it down just like normal. And it just, it sandwiches it in there between the screw and a block that they put in there and just sandwiches it down and then you're just gonna tug on it and make sure it's tight. Make sure that when you strip these that you don't have too much copper showing out the back. A little bit's okay, but too much can cause arcs in the box and shorts and all that good stuff. Not the good kind of shorts, I'm talking about the dangerous kind that's gonna trip out stuff. So make sure that that's right. And that's all you do for these. And then obviously you're gonna put your grounds together in the box if you have to. Um, they should already be put together. And what I mean by that is all your grounds in the boxes, here and I'll show you one. Excuse my chair for squeaking. Um, I swear it was the chair. There I go rhyming again. So all your grounds should be woven together like that, twisted up, and then there's a splice cap on there. This one was painted like most of them you'll see, but it should just be one lead coming out. There should be nothing hanging out, nothing crazy. Now it's also possible that you will have a green version of a wire nut with all those grounds underneath it and just have one lead coming out. That's fine too, but ideally nowadays splice caps, which are these, are what you want around those grounds, okay? You can buy these in bags for pretty cheap. Um, they're little copper things, but yeah, that's pretty much the gist of it. Just pay attention to where you're pulling stuff off of and just put it back together the way that you found it. If it was working, if it's not working, you, I can't really get into how to troubleshoot stuff right now on this video. I've already taken up 18 good minutes of your time, but yeah, um, if you got to troubleshoot, just call somebody or I'll try to do another video later on on troubleshooting, but I just wanted to give you some quick tips some things to think about and I can do some more of these videos if people like them, maybe go on to changing lights and all that kind of stuff. But basically most people have to change out switches and receptacles. So I wanted to do a video on that. And oh, before I forget, the whole reason the tape is important is because when you're pulling wires out of the wall, when it's off, of course, you want to check them and make sure you don't see any sort of little nicks or anything like that in the, in the casing. And if you do, if you see any copper or any nicks in it, Wrap it up with some tape and it'll be fine. Obviously, if it's so bad where it's like breaking, that's a different thing. And then also, before you put all these back in the wall, you know, um, whether it be a switch or a receptacle, I always wrap mine in tape, okay? And let me show you what I'm talking about, what that'll look like before you put it back in the wall. So these, always wrap these in tape. It will save you some hurt later on and it just makes you feel better about putting all, cause look at all the wires in there. This is a bare wire right here. So if this rubs up against here or here, when there's no tape around it, it can set off arcs and everything and have tripping and you'll end up paying somebody a lot of money to come out and just add some tape and fix the problem. Um, I've been to calls where I've literally walked in a house and reset one of these and problem solved thanks here's 150 dollars for resetting one of these so just be smart about it make sure your stuff's off be careful please and i hope this was informative gave you some things to think about with the switches and receptacles the most common fixes around a house um 
you have any questions or you want to see any other videos on electrical stuff, I'd be happy to do it and I'll try not to be long winded, but um, once I get going, these are important things. So, all right. Well, thanks for stopping by and I hope you enjoyed it. Take care and stay safe.